Eh, buenas, buenos días a todos. En breves vamos a comenzar ya por fin el tercer simposium Felipe Segovia. Les recordamos que pueden hacer uso de sus dispositivos móviles, pero sin sonido, por favor. Y recuerden que podrán participar, interactuar, opinar a través de Twitter. El hashtag es, como ven en la pantalla, hashtag SymposiumSec2017. Bueno, perdón, hashtag SymposiumSec17. Les recordamos una vez más que, por favor, descarguen en sus teléfonos móviles la aplicación Teams, que será de gran uso durante el día. Muchas gracias.
Buenos días, por favor, vayan terminando de sentarse. Vamos a empezar el tercer simposio en Felipe Segovia. Hola de nuevo. Gracias a todos por estar hoy aquí con nosotros en la Universidad Camilo José Cela. En una jornada en la que también tendremos como escenario el Colegio Seca el Castillo. Arranca el tercer simposium Felipe Segovia. Un tercer simposium que tiene este año una significación muy especial para toda nuestra comunidad de aprendizaje, ya que en este 2017 conmemoramos el 125 aniversario de la institución. Queremos además saludar a todos los compañeros que nos están siguiendo vía streaming en esta inauguración. Desde aquí, un fuerte abrazo a nuestros compañeros de Pontevedra, Barcelona, Almería, Qatar, Dublín y Alpes. Les recordamos también que tenemos wifi en abierto en todas las instalaciones. Aquí en la carpa el wifi es eh, Symposium Carpa y en el Segel Castillo es Symposium Felipe Segovia. Symposium FS. Comenzamos hoy, como siempre nos ha gustado, con los alumnos como protagonistas. Y qué mejor para hacerlo que una actuación musical con una banda de percusión que viene de Barcelona del Colegio SEC Cataluña. Que decimos, como decimos en la jerga del cine, claqueta y acción.
Una actuación verdaderamente increíble. Vaya ritmo. Y además nos sirve para recargar el pila para una jornada que promete ser muy intensa. Y a la que además vamos a disfrutar aprendiendo y compartiendo. Tiene la palabra doña Neves Segovia, presidenta de la institución educativa SEC. Bien, buenos días y muchas gracias a todos los chicos de SEC Cataluña. Eh, es la mejor manera, como decía Juan José, de empezar con mucha energía. Si había alguien dormido, está claro que ya no. Así es que gracias por venir y además sé que venían con muchísima ilusión desde Barcelona para, en fin, para compartir nuestra, nuestra jornada y, y bueno también compartir un poco de ese trabajo que hacen en las actividades del, del colegio. Así es que, bueno, bienvenidos a todos a una jornada, como decían, intensa y yo creo que también importante. Importante porque es una ocasión única para todos para compartir, para aprender juntos, para compartir esas mejores prácticas, tal vez mejores hoy, no sé si mañana porque todo es tan volátil y tan rápido, pero para aprender los unos de los otros eh, y para celebrar ese sentido de, de comunidad que es tan importante para la institución educativa SEC, con mayor motivo en este año en el que celebramos nuestro 125 eh, aniversario. Hoy nos acompañan profesores, muchísimos, eh, familias, también bastantes familias han querido sumarse a, a este encuentro y nos alegramos muchísimo, y alumnos. Hemos querido también que, que los alumnos que siempre están en el centro de toda nuestra actividad tengan un lugar importantísimo y, y principal en, en esta jornada. De lo que vamos a hablar es de ellos, de cómo nos acercamos, de cómo eh, les ayudamos, de cómo intentamos eh, estar a la altura de, de sus expectativas, de sus necesidades, de sus ambiciones y de, y de sus sueños. De eso se trata al final a lo largo de toda, toda la jornada. Así es que en primer lugar, bienvenidos. Bienvenidos a un simposio que no tiene un nombre cualquiera, por supuesto, que lleva el nombre de, de, del fundador de la institución, como hoy la conocemos, de mi padre. Un nombre que sin duda nos, nos obliga a todos y que es modelo de eso que queremos hacer. Me decía hace poco Stephen, eh, y luego les daré la bienvenida a Mark y a, y a Stephen, eh, me decía hace poco... Eh, que, que todos somos alumnos y todos somos profesores, que cualquier profesor hoy es alumno y cualquier alumno hoy es profesor. Y yo creo que eso es una verdad muy grande porque comunidad, como comunidad ese es el centro eh, de aquello que nos vertebra, de aquello que nos une, de aquello eh, que en el fondo todos nos hace sentir el sentido de pertenencia a todos, a una comunidad más extensa. Eh, y mi padre, como decía, era un clarísimo ejemplo de haber sido toda su vida un gran maestro, pero no haber dejado de aprender nunca en ningún momento de su vida. Siempre tuvo el afán y eso fue lo que de alguna manera eh, llevó a la institución también a ser ese modelo de institución que aprende. Decía, siempre tuvo ese afán, esa curiosidad, ese afán por descubrir, ese afán por aprender, ese afán por ir más lejos, ese afán por no conformarse. Todo esto no suena porque sin duda son las, las, los atributos principales de, de nuestra institución. Una institución que los exige mucho y que siempre está pensando, como decimos una y otra vez, en ese nuevo horizonte educativo, que claro, como es un horizonte nunca llegamos, pero que sin duda nos marca, nos marca un poco la hoja de ruta de hacia dónde nos dirigimos y siempre es más lejos. Somos una institución que aunque celebra 125 años no se conforma con mirar atrás. Por supuesto hay que mirar atrás para aprender, porque hemos hecho tantas y tantas cosas que no debemos olvidar, eh, que es importante que estén presentes en, en, bueno, en nuestro sentido de comunidad, pero que siempre ha estado mirando hacia adelante. Y en este sentido quería traer, eh, o quería detenerme un segundo a comentar esta fotografía que ha ilustrado el, el, el simposium, la, la fotografía de, del simposium, eh, y que fue tomada, y de hecho está datada, está, la fotografía está cortada, está datada el 16 de octubre de 1962. Una fotografía que le gustaba mucho a mi padre porque decía que, claro, estaba datada en el anverso y no en el reverso, como habitualmente sucede. Y en la pizarra lo que ponía era la fecha del día. Está cortada y no se ve entera, muchos la habréis visto. Y yo creo que es una fotografía tomada en 1962 y que tiene una cierta singularidad. No es una fotografía al uso. Uno piensa en una fotografía de un aula en 1962 y se imagina pues, las, la, los pupitres en fila, alumnos sentados. Posiblemente en 1962 solo chicos o solo chicas eh, 
bueno, eso era un aula tradicional en el, en el año 1962 en, en España, muy pasiva, poca interacción. Esta, sin embargo, nos transmite algo muy diferente. Hay alumnos y hay alumnas, están aprendiendo haciendo, eh, es una actividad práctica, no hay una configuración tradicional. Y el hecho de haber querido tomar este tipo de fotografía, yo creo que ya en aquel momento pues, nos inspira un cierto espíritu de innovación, de cambio, de algo que nosotros vemos como absolutamente normal hoy, pero que hace 55 años no lo era. Esa es nuestra tradición, esa es nuestra verdad, eso es lo que somos. Y basta con mirar atrás, me fijo en esta fotografía, como podría hacerlo en textos, en otras experiencias, en proyectos, en tantas y tantas cosas que se han hecho y que son, como decía, motivo de inspiración y que nos permiten recordar que lo que hoy hacemos no es eh, por generación espontánea, no son ocurrencias, sino que tiene una coherencia interna a lo largo de toda nuestra vida. De hecho, nuestra vida institucional. De hecho, la fotografía que elegimos hace muy poquitos, eh, muy poquitos meses para ilustrar Somos SEC, no sé si la tenemos también, es muy parecida. Eh, los colegios son más internacionales, sin duda esa fotografía es más multicultural, pero de nuevo hay alumnos y alumnas que aprenden haciendo. Hay un profesor que guía, que no está solamente en el escenario, que no es, es decir que es más el mentor y el coach que, que ese, ese, ese sage on stage, ¿no? como se dicen, que de alguna manera pues no, no, no invita a una interacción o a una actividad o a una metodología distinta, que es la que nosotros pues, le damos el lugar de privilegio en nuestras aulas. Así es que con 55 años de diferencia, al final hay los conductores que, que nos recuerdan cuáles son nuestros signos de identidad. Bueno, mucho de todo eso es lo que sin duda hoy queremos celebrar, lo queremos celebrar juntos, no tener esta oportunidad hoy en un día completo para estar aquí todos y, y, y aprender de esas interacciones que también se van a producir y en las que confío que, que la única que hace esto de estar en un escenario con una audiencia pasiva sea yo ahora y que luego esto se rompa y sea algo completamente diferente, bueno, pues yo creo que es una oportunidad única que sin duda vamos a aprovechar. Así es que, sin más, os doy la bienvenida a todos y las gracias muy, muy especiales, aunque luego, lógicamente, en el cierre, pues hagamos una mención especialísima a todos los que han hecho posible que estemos aquí hoy. ¿Os imagináis la logística que ha significado eh, organizar todo este encuentro? Ha habido un equipo de personas, la Fundación Felipe Segovia, su director, su consejo asesor y luego un equipo de personas que han estado al frente de toda esta organización. Le han dedicado muchísimas horas y algo mucho más importante, le han dedicado muchísimo cariño a que esto hoy salga bien. Así es que vaya por delante, muchísimas gracias, muchos están aquí hoy, les pido un aplauso, aunque luego esta tarde les dediquemos otro. Y sin más, bueno, vamos a empezar con esta sesión en la que tenemos dos invitados de privilegio. Pasaremos ahora al inglés para tener esta charla, esta conversación con nuestros invitados. I'm very, very pleased and honored to welcome you, uh, Stephen and Mark, Stephen Heppel, Mark Bransky. You are good friends of this, uh, of SEC, of SEK and UCJC. <laughs> You're long-time friends. We've known each other for almost 10 years, I think, now. And that's a long time. And I think we've traveled a lot together and I think we've learned a lot. I have learned a lot from you and the whole group has learned a lot from you. You're always an inspiration and, uh, and it's a privilege to have both of you today with us. It's very unique. I know it's very unique. So we are uh, thrilled and I'm thrilled to welcome you on stage, please. <laughs> Creo, tengo que aprovechar para decir que tener a, a Mark Frensky y a Stephen Heppel con nosotros hoy realmente es, una, es un privilegio. No es frecuente que, que puedan asistir juntos a, a un evento. Sabéis que los eventos en los que hacen sus keynotes son atendidos masivamente por miles de personas que le siguen el mundo entero. Así es que para nosotros eh, tenerles hoy y que además hayan querido de forma deliberada estar aquí hoy. Stephen ha venido solo para estar en el simposium y Marc ha prolongado su estancia. También vino a trabajar en el taller que hemos celebrado en Ciudad Campo estos días pasados, pero quiso estar también hoy aquí, también de alguna manera, bueno, pues para compartir nuestra comunidad y como me han dicho los dos, para rendirle homenaje a mi padre y yo se lo agradezco mucho a los dos. Thank you very much. So. Okay. I'm a, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. <coughs> 
so this was um, this was this is meant to be a conversation, <laughs> one of uh, of the many we've had over the years. But we're going to share this one <laughs> with uh, with some more people. Again, um, again, thank you, thank you very much. I uh, I would just like to start with asking you first impressions about SEKs and UCJCs learning journey. You've shared it with us, for, as I said, for some years. You've inspired parts of that learning journey. But what would your first impressions be about our learning community, where we stand in the international education innovation world? What is your first impressions? And uh, we can share a little about this, and then we'll probably be welcoming some students who will also have their own insights about this. So, um, Well, I, um, good morning. <laughs> when is this? Um, it's interesting to sit here looking back mm -hmm. and looking forwards. Um, 125 years is a long time, but <laughs> there are some things that are given and that don't change. We did some research in the 90s asking <coughs> people what their best learning journey was, and of course it included doing things with others, feeling part of a group, mm -hmm. um, doing things that were really hard, uh, having enjoyment, pleasure, mm -hmm. being led by great teachers. I don't see a model in the past or the future that doesn't have Teacher. great teachers at its heart. But it takes an enormous vision to start all this off. I've just come from Frankfurt and I've been in a museum of of education, of all things, looking at the old desks and the, <laughs> the punishments, you know. <laughs> but you realise how brave, how brave did you have to be to be in a learning family, a learning community all those years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was standing outside under, there's an oak tree out there, and I picked up a little acorn here from the tree, you know. <laughs> hey, if you'd have planted that, under here, look, hey, have your own go, you know. <laughs> If you'd have planted that 125 years, it'd just about be a tree now. Mm -hmm. And the boat I sail, which is 110 years old, it had built from oak, so somebody must have planted the tree so far back. To be brave enough to do this well, needed insight, needed just, uh, just proper, proper valour. And, and yet we stand here now with this fabulous community, and, and look at how good the students were. I know so many of you, you know. Wow. <laughs> Looking forward, we're at this moment, 2018, 2019, 2020. For the first time, every student in our schools were born in this millennium. And every teacher, by the way, was born in the last millennium. So. If it was brave 125 years ago to build this, this fabulous family, this community of exceptional learning, what should we do with it now going forward into the next millennium? And I think the, the braveness of one person to build this forward has now got to be the braveness of all of us to take it forward and do something exceptional with it. When we, last thing, but when we first put technology into learning, the question was, could we do anything with it that was useful? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, what would we like to do? And what I see as I look at the students, particularly the sex students that I've been working with, we've been working mm -hmm. with all this time, we do not know how good they can be. We know they can be astonishing. Mm -hmm. So I think our challenge is to be brave enough to scare them a little mm -hmm. so they can astonish us right back with how good they can be, and we've seen a little hint already of that <laughs> this morning. So the journey's begun, but boy, what a journey we're on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> Stephen. So to you, Mark. <laughs> so when I first met Stephen, <laughs> and I asked him to write a foreword for my book, <laughs> and he said, yes, we have to do this because there are so few of us who are doing this and pushing the education and our kids into the future. And my experience has been that in hooking up with Stephen, what I kept doing was meeting other people. And one of the very first people that I met was Felipe Segovia and Nieves Segovia, who I said, these people are going in just the direction that we want to go. Mm -hmm. So here we have this wonderful trio of people who are working together. 
But that keeps extending because, as Neves reminded me yesterday, we went to WISE in Qatar, and now there's a school in Qatar. Mm -hmm. We went to other places. We, have a, we just had yesterday a wonderful get-together with Design for Change mm -hmm. organization that's making a lot of change in the world. And I have to tell you, because of yesterday, you have to watch out for one thing. You may, at some point, because this was invented yesterday <laughs> by the students, mm -hmm. if your wastebasket starts playing music, <laughs> it means you have to start <laughs> dancing and cleaning up at the same time and putting everything in the wastebasket. <laughs> so we're inventing for the future, and the biggest change that I see is that we, for many, many, many decades, centuries even, we were going on to have education make individuals better, we had schools, we had learning, we have all these things which are wonderful. What's happening now uh, that I think is, is changing is that we're getting a new goal for education. That the reason we educate our kids is not just to make them better kids, it's to make a better world. Mm -hmm. And then the kids obviously improve in the process. Mm -hmm. And it's a better world, not from our point of view, but from their point of view, mm -hmm. because they're going to live in it. And the thing that I'm most excited about, about working with Nieves and about working with SEC and about working with Stephen, is that we are all really focused and helping focus the kids on making this a better world. And I think that's a goal that everybody can become a part of, that all the kids will benefit from it because they get what they need that we'll get a better world while they're still in school. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is that we'll have kids who come into the world knowing that they can make a better world, knowing having made a better world, having done it as their education. So welcome to the better world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. Actually, you know, the motive for this uh, meeting, of this not just the gathering, actually, our 125th anniversary is pioneers since 1892, which tells a lot about our learning journey. We've always tried to pioneer new initiatives, always, as I just mentioned, going forward to this new horizon that, well, of course, we'll never reach, but that's the fun of it. Well, and one of the <laughs> that's really, the journey. <laughs> one of the big surprises, I think, are that most of the children starting in sex schools today mm -hmm. will live to 125. So the, you know, the journey that this we'll organization be has been on <laughs> is just a lifetime. And um, arming them at the beginning of that journey to be brave, ingenious, curious, mm -hmm. rather playful is a big task. You know. <laughs> and I bet it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> We're enjoying it very much. <laughs> so, uh, you're both visionaries. I mean, I'm, you might not like the, the, the word, but, sure. <laughs> but I'm sure you're called again and again visionaries about the future of education. What would you think, and we know concepts keep changing, that's part of our world, but what would you consider to be, a, in your vision, a pioneering education right now? What would the traits for the pioneer education be? Just a couple of them. What does it resound to you to think? This is a pioneer education. Today. Well, I, I think it's what I said, okay. which is, Let's look finally at the <coughs> ends of education, not just the means. Learning is a wonderful means. Mm -hmm. We have new technological means. All these things are coming. But why do we educate the kids? Mm -hmm. Why do we spend money, our own money, state money, mm -hmm. uh, society's money, to educate our kids if it's not to make a better world for them? Otherwise, we just stratify them and we give them tests and some of them rise to the top and a lot of them rise to the bottom. But they have the capacity and somebody, one of the students yesterday said, what was the phrase that she said? We're bigger than we, we thought. Think. Yeah, that's very right? good. Yeah. We're bigger than we thought. And that's, I think, where, where I see education going. Mm -hmm. It's empowering kids. We've treated them for a very long time as if they were people we could control, or even pets that we could control. Sit here, go here, roll over, do these tricks, take a test, do well, go to the bathroom when we tell you. They're not pets. They are human beings, 
And now they are human beings who are, whose brains are extended by the technologies in their pockets, and those brains are all connected together around the world. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're struggling to figure out how to deal with. Mm -hmm. How do we take these new, different, empowered, connected people and really use their power to make a better world for them and their posterity? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any well, I mean, ne neither of us would be here if it wasn't already um, a pretty good stab at what <laughs> pioneering looks like. <laughs> uh, and as, as, you know, if you look around the world, you'll, you'll see two or three things. I mean, one is community matters. You know, look around the audience here, the people from the university, from schools, from families. Mm -hmm. These are all places of learning. You know, we, uh, as we join those up, there are very, very few I count them on, on less than the fingers of one hand around the world institutions that have schools and universities and families so tightly tied together, and that's, mm -hmm. that's special. That's special. So a big question is what do we do with all that, apart from um, have the most delightful time as learners? And when you look at the numbers around the world, two billion children. So try and imagine the room, a billion here, a billion here, this billion are having a pretty torrid time in terms of learning. This billion are getting to school, but it's not very effective. Mm -hmm. Of the billion that get to school for any sort of time, about half of them don't make very much progress at all. The movement towards OECD goals, mm -hmm. you know, barely 5% gains in 15, 20 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, look at the audience, only a quarter now are having any sort of success in schools at all. And of that quarter, we fail about half. So. If you imagine the world being everybody sitting in this room as learners, just really a sort of quarter at the front are having any kind of good time. So what do we do, as Mark says really, what do we do with the largesse, the opportunity, the stability, the family, the history, the provenance that we've got here? The answer is we prototype how good learning can be for the rest of the world. And that's a little, it's a little expensive to be first. Mm -hmm. But we have to be conscious that following <coughs> us will be people who can copy what we do, mm -hmm. and by doing it in bulk, we'll do it more cheaply. So, you know, the model you see around you as you chat to each other all day is the model of learning that can mend the world. I mean, it's not unrealistic to think. Mm -hmm. Not much else has mended the world, you know. <laughs> no. We've tried hitting each other on the head and <laughs> throwing things at each other and shooting each other. It hasn't worked very well. Mm -hmm. Learning can do it. Mm -hmm. Learning can do it. Well, that's certainly an, an inspiration for us all. And thank you to Stephen for highlighting the fact that it's, um, it's very unique to have schools very and the university and, and to be having students and teachers from both schools and university coming together and hopefully families to, uh, and joining in this, mm. in this community. So I think we should probably be welcoming this powerful <laughs> young generation of students to come on we and should. stage. And as we do that, please come up. Yeah. Uh, you can invite them. I just make the comment that certainly from my part of the world, we don't look at a continuum <laughs> of primary school kids all the way through college, all the way through employment. And if we don't start doing that, mm -hmm. we'll never get anywhere. How do you do? Oh, so um, welcome, bienvenidos. Uh, today we have uh, two distinguished members of my junior advisory board here. So we have Monica and we have Carlos, both from Segel Castillo, just neighbors to UCJC. You're very welcome. And uh, we also have Larissa, who's um, yeah, Larissa. She is a, a student in the fourth uh, year of psychology at UCJC. And we also have Blanca, who's about to finish her double degree in primary and infant education. So welcome to. So again, this is the uniqueness of our community, being able to, to share um, our thoughts. And that's what we're here for, to hold this broader conversation. A privilege to, to be able to be sharing this with, with Mark and Stephen and, and all of us. So if I might also start with, um, with a quick question. What would you think you're getting? And you have to be very, very truthful. To, I mean, all these questions are really here to learn from you. So would you think you are enjoying a 
pioneering education or what would be the highlights of your education be? And we'll talk about, we'll say, the challenges later. But now we'll concentrate on the, on the positives. Um, so, uh, because challenges is what we're here to overcome, of course, but talk about the positives to inspire us at the start of this journey. So, um, what would your highlights be? Do you feel, do you think this is a, getting a pioneering education? Well, um, here in Africa, <coughs> Castillo, I'm glad to say that I really think I am receiving a pioneer education because it's, I mean, I've been all my life in this school and it's just, I can tell that it's a school that really uh, bets at and invests in our opinion. I mean, it's, we, are, we, we are taught every day uh, new things, but we are always uh, asked for our opinion in, in terms of what we are learning and if we think that we are learning correctly, what we can um, add to all of that that we are learning. And also, I would like to highlight the opinion that uh, Mark has about why we should educate children. He, he said that we should educate children because um, in that sense, we are uh, creating a better world for them. I think that that's totally true, but in fact, uh, when you, the adults, uh, teach us uh, new things, mm -hmm. in fact, you're teaching us how to uh, um, we could be able to create our better world. Instead of you creating us a better world, you teach us how to be able to individually create our better world. And that's, in my opinion, what a pioneer education uh, should do and actually does uh, in the present, at least this institution. So I'm gl really glad to say Thank uh, that. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Monica, you might want to add on this, your personal opinions, whatever. Um, well, I'm a bit nervous, you know, like, <laughs> after that comment, I'm a bit like, um, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think so, because, like, we are really focused on the future, and we are always thinking about what are we going to do, and what are we going to, how are we going to support the world, mm -hmm. and what are we going to be? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important because we are, we are always thinking about us, but always about more people. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think we are quite important and we will be important in the future. And we will construct everything that we are watching right now. Like, um, we are right now in a society that maybe we will change for obviously for make it better, for better. <laughs> so yeah i think so like <laughs> it's important we are important of course you are <laughs> thank you very and, much and, and, and a lovely little practical example of that I was i was working with the advisory council they were exploring the role of of um you know telephones in learning what might we do with them in the mm -hmm. in the classroom and i came along to to yeah. listen really and uh, no, nobody gave me an opinion they gave me their research they said We've looked at this, we've researched this, we've discovered this, and this is what we've found. And I have it saying, well, I've done some work. They say, yeah, yeah, we've read all that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're here not just to be opinionated, <coughs> but to be wise researchers about making their learning better and making the world better. And that's really important. It's mm -hmm. not your opinions, it's your heads, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, like, I don't think that, like, you... Mm, you ask us our opinion, but I think that we teach the adults how to to teach us. You know, like <laughs> like they <laughs> we teach you like how is the best way to to take our ideas and how to yeah how to teach us. I, I'm a bit nervous. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> So you're, but you're, you're, you're certainly <laughs> correct that the best way for us to teach you proper is to be listening to you and to learn from you the ways you want to be taught. And that, that's what I mean. That's why we really need your your insights. Well, you're certainly, here. that's why you're sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> so and, I think and, and I, to I was just going to comment that that one of the partners that we now have added to our group mm -hmm. is somebody that I work with in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. whose name is Esther Wojcicki. Yeah, and shirts are. Last and year, remember in June, when she we was, had the... Yeah, she was here, came. and some of you may have met her. Mm -hmm. And she has the wonderful acronym called TRIC, mm -hmm. which is Trust, Respect, Independence, Collaboration, and Kindness. Mm -hmm. And 
if we can make those five things go both ways mm -hmm. and all ways around in the work that we do mm -hmm. so that the teachers trust the kids, the kids trust the teachers, teachers respect the kids, the kids respect the teachers and so on, and everybody's kind, she calls it her secret sauce. <laughs> and I think that that's something that uh, we can all learn from mm -hmm. and, and will take us very, very, very far. Sure. Thank you, Mark. So, okay. Is um, that? You're dying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not actually. I'm like I'm <laughs> that nervous <laughs> as well. But, um, okay. So, when I think like straight away what I think about um, um, pioneering and education, just like at university. Yeah. Like straight away comes this uh, remove boundaries thing. Mm -hmm. Like I straight away think about technology as well, mm -hmm. and and um, expanding new methods and mm -hmm. um, creating a new environment. Maybe mm -hmm. that will be. Mm -hmm. That's what but I think it's a little bit beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, you have to take uh, into account the context on, in which you're 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 working. Uh, it's the right time. How are my like my students the way they are? Like not only individually, but think as a group of of people mm -hmm. that have uh, um, different uh, uh, ethics, different uh, ways of thinking, um, and and just don't really evaluate. Each one is, is, is a unique individual. Like, mm -hmm. you just have to think like this way, and you have to do this. And you, because you're sitting next to this one, you just have to like develop in the same way, and all like like little robots in that state that you were mm -hmm. talking before, mm -hmm. like pets. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just like think it like they are a group, and they have like they have different levels of, of development, like. They don't have to develop the same way or on, at the same time, and so yeah, we have to like go beyond uh, that and expand into I don't know the individual development. I think it's it's that's the real the real the real thing, and think that's of them as 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 a real good good group like a group. group that's boy. certainly the type of a psychologist. Just you know. Round yeah, the corner, yeah, <laughs> she's there. But it's great. It's great. There's there's a lot of that. I mean, we keep talking about personalization, but now it's it can be done, and it's uh, we're all unique for sure. And that's something we've also been discussing very very frequently. Yeah. So necessary. So um, we also have uh, Blanca. <laughs> yes, future teacher. <laughs> yes. So when I first think <coughs> in innovation, we always. Um, think on new methodologies or new mm. spaces and materials, as you said. So why not to do it more practice? Mm. And um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, we can do as teachers uh, some changes that uh, improve the learning of the students, um, like, um, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, <coughs> like the um, use of the mobile phones. I have one subject at the university uh, in which we use the mobile phones like uh, if it was the computer. Yeah. So I learned how to use my mobile phone to learn. How to learn How with to the mobile learn, phone. Yes. <laughs> Not to use only Instagram or WhatsApp or mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. these sure. applications. So, mm -hmm. this so is it's, that's very, important. very, very yes. important. How, mm -hmm. uh, the school of education um, needs to model with their own student yes. teachers. Yes. Yeah, that, and, that practices. That, and that ability to keep on learning. You know, if, uh, you, you, know you look at the history of, of SEC and then mm -hmm. you think, in technology terms, you know, gosh, we, we only had iPads and mobile phones, really, s smartphones, really, 2010, 28, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. You know, think where we're going to be in 100 years' time. Wow. Um, and that ability to pick them up and use them, not 
in the way they were designed, but they've got to mash up the technology to do the learning that you need mm -hmm. for your family, your community, your world. It's really it's a huge thing to be armed with, and it's a big difference. You know, when I've always got technology in my pocket somewhere, you know, I've got a little... You always have a gadget. Yeah, I've always got always always something. There's a little, um, little robot thing yeah, here that runs around the floor that you, you can control with your phone. But, um, mm -hmm. Can you make it disappear? Uh, yeah, but it's gone already, it. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when, when we first started looking at these and then with the makerspace debate with the teachers mm -hmm. of SEC, the thing was about that big, well, now it's this big, mm -hmm. and I can talk to it and it listens and it's got intelligence, and that's in, what, 18 months, yeah, two that's years? Yeah, it's been you know? in a year, a year and a half. So how long before that's running around my bloodstream, you know, looking <laughs> for cancerous cells and doing smart things? Not very long. You know, we need to have our, exactly as you say, we need to have our heads in what might we do this going forward rather than what is it, how do, I, how do I become trained to use it? So that ingenuity is absolutely key to all this. You know. And, and I, yeah, what's going And I, I think that, that what you were talking about is that we, we're learning that it's, even though we have all these more kids, which we do, which makes, the, that's why it's hard for them to compete if we say, here's the same stuff, we're gonna rank you, and you have to get to the top. There's so many of them, it's going to be so competitive, and that's why we're already seeing the dangerous effects that we're seeing from some of the competition. On the other hand, every single person is an individual. So when we give, somebody has a, a phone or a, a mobile phone or a computer, it's not so they can learn something that we tell them they should learn. Mm -hmm. It's so that they can take this and do and make this a tool to accomplish something that they know is important. Now, clearly, they're going to have to learn stuff. You can't just pick it up and do it. But the idea is that we, if you, this is a different idea of education, that somebody comes into a classroom and you say, who are you? Tell me your dreams. Tell me what you love. Tell me what your strengths are. And tell me where you want to go and what problems you'd like to fix in the world, and I will be your guide to help you get there. Mm -hmm. I am not here to teach you only mathematics. I am your guide to get you where you want to go. And the best example of that, again, goes back to Esther, who mm -hmm. had a student who's now famous in some places. Anybody ever heard of the actor James Franco? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, James Franco was Esther's student, <coughs> and when she asked him to write a forward to her book, he wrote, she showed me I could take my dreams as seriously as I wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's really, I think, the, if we talk about going into the future and pioneering, mm -hmm. that's what we want to do for every single student. Take your dreams and your dreams and your dreams, different dreams, but take them as seriously as you wanted and go as far as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. and, and, you. and you've still got to know stuff, you know. So you've got to, you've got to learn that, and that information, that knowledge, that insight. If, you if you're not reading quantum physics now and getting your head around the impact that's going to have on the next five, ten years, get, get out there and read it or listen to the podcast. You have to know stuff. Mm -hmm. But on top of that <laughs> stuff, you've got to have dreams, and that's why I like working with these guys. Well, the, the interesting thing, if we can have a dialogue, Stephen, you of and course. I, is that <laughs> the, the, while the stuff is important, it's different stuff different for every stuff. single person. Mm -hmm. So you can't anymore say, here's the textbook <coughs> of physics or math or a language or whatever it is. Everybody learn that stuff. We have to figure out the ways of saying, well, to get where you want to go, here's the stuff you need mm -hmm. right now and to figure out then how to integrate that and make that into uh, you know, larger pieces of knowledge. But the, the education in the past has been learn stuff and then do stuff. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing now, I think, is the blending. Mm -hmm. And so it's no longer you have to go through all these years of learning before you can get to work. And what happens when you get to work? You start all over. You start mm -hmm. at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You're, a, you're a, an intern, practically. Yeah. <laughs> so we need an education, I think, mm -hmm. and I think this is where you're starting and this is where the workshops are and the work that you're doing, Stephen, that really integrates the idea of, of learning what you need but with an end of doing what you want to do. 
Thank, thank you very much. And of course, technology just came up naturally. Um, and as we're talking about this unique personal education that really talks to every, to every student and in, in his or her passions and interests, and which is a huge challenge as I see it. That's really, that's probably this next horizon where we're heading, having personal, unique uh, learning pathways for every student uh, aimed at, at making this better world the way they want it to be a better world, as they just told us. But do you think, back to the technology concept that's come up so naturally, uh, do you think it's delivering the promises? And if not, is it on, on our side to maybe making be, to be making a better use of technology? Or, um, or did we, because we've been talking about how technology is going to transform education well, for these, 20 these are, years now. These are the now. guys to ask because yeah, they've uh, been... I, I want yeah, to say I'm asking everyone, actually. Um, uh, okay. uh, is it integrated into your learning I, I wanted to say something about technology. I mean, when we look at <laughs> pioneer education, it's commonly, we, we commonly see that pioneer education is directly uh, connected to uh, technology. And developing new technology and implementing it to education is the main focus regarding uh, pioneer education. But I, I don't see it that way. I mean, Good. I think <laughs> it's, I mean, it's cool, it's okay to say, to implement new technology in education, but it's not, I think it should not be the focus because there is many education, uh, sorry, many technology right now available. And it's not about investing in new technology uh, to implement in education. I think it's more using the uh, technology we already have. And also a pioneer education is not a new education. I mean, different one. We can always uh, look at the past and learn from that experience in order to improve our present education, but I mean, pioneer education, in my opinion, it's not uh, new technology, new things, new stuff. It's more, let's take what we have, our technology, and past experiences, and develop new things from that, but not develop new technology and implement it to a new education. I don't know if I have explained myself correctly. Perfectly well, Perfectly. and I think we all agree. Yeah. I think so. Maybe uh, not. I have a slightly different approach. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's if good if to I listen to say you. It, it's slightly different. I think that <laughs> when, we, when we think about technology, what we really are thinking about are the are capabilities that that technology offers us. Mm -hmm. It's not the fact that it's this machine or this mm -hmm. big or whatever it is. It's what could we do that we could never do before. Mm -hmm. So we could read and write and research, and if we use technology for that, it adds very little value. It's mm -hmm. nice, but it doesn't. But what we could never do before is have conversations in real time with people in countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. We couldn't show up in a place where they're having a crisis mm -hmm. and actually s explore and look around and look for people. We couldn't build robots that would help that place <coughs> find the the bombs or mines that are sitting around. We couldn't simulate the effects of growth or this kind of education or that kind of education. And now we can do all those kinds of things. And so if we see the technology as extending the capabilities mm -hmm. that we have as human beings, so we could never, psychology is a great example, we could mm -hmm. never get inside the brain before. And now we're starting to get inside the brain. And that's really technology. The idea of teaching, we could never reach each person individually before mm -hmm. very much. Now we can. Mm -hmm. So it's really explore, for me, the idea of technology is not to exploring technology. Mm -hmm. It's exploring the new capabilities mm -hmm. that technology is now offering us and especially our young people. Mm -hmm. oh, and we, yep. we ought to put a word in for data because uh -huh. um, sport, okay. uh, health, been transformed by data. Uh -huh. And you know, the amount we now know, you know, I know I'm too fat, I know uh -huh. what I should be eating, I know how much I should be sleeping for my own health. You're not supposed to laugh, you know. <laughs> but I am, you know. So I know all this information. You guys are going to have so much information allowing you to make even better judgments about your learning. When we, when we made over some of the classrooms in the sex schools and some, some of the guys we did it with are here, you know, um, one of the students said to me, you know, I've been in seven schools in my life. This is the first time anybody's asked me how it could be better. Mm -hmm. And 
what they did was so much better that the schools were, I mean, look at what Mary Cruz has done. It's good, fantastic, standing on the shoulders of the insights of the students mm -hmm. in the first place. Imagine how good that's going to be when we have data about, you know, your attention levels, your focus. We're sitting at the front here. It's really hot at the front here, mm -hmm. uh, way too hot for learning. If we were trying to do maths now, we'd be, <coughs> we'd be struggling, you know. Mm -hmm. That information, you know, with chairs that when you sit on them for too long, the red light starts to flash to warn you to get up and move around because it's good for your brain. A proper insight as you're doing work into, I wonder what the guys are doing in Singapore at this point, you know. Mm -hmm. SEC has this global community, it's not just a local family. So we've got the chance to get insights from each other up a mountain, over in Ireland, in the heat of Qatar. You know, we can share our data mm -hmm. and learn how to do learning better. And that not many other people can do that. 1.17 million schools in China. Not one of them has the advantage you all have. And that's really special. And data will multiply that a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think we need to wrap up in a few minutes, but I want to ask a, a question to us all, to you all. <laughs> and uh, I said we're here to learn. So uh, what would be your piece of advice to us as, as an institution, as SEC, as UCJC, as a school? What's your piece of advice? Where do you think we need to focus? So where are the challenges? Said that said the things that we need to, to be better at, because that's what we're here for. As Monica mentioned, we are going to tell you how to teach it. So just give us a piece of advice from your perspectives, first the students, but of course from you, to um, about in which direction we should be heading. It's, the, it's your opportunity. You have your teachers here. You have the heads of your schools too. You have maybe parents, I don't know. Got everyone. So uh, we might start with uh, Monica or Carlos. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's a bit, I mean, harsh or something, but I mean. <laughs> be careful, you no, know, no. Nick is <laughs> there looking at it, you. <laughs> it has to be understood. I mean, SEC, it's a very important institution right now. Uh, I mean, I love this institution, I can tell that. And due to the fact that SEC uh, invests a lot in education and has and provides a really good education to children. It has been, it, it is very famous right now. So my advice would be, uh, well, you are getting more and more famous, never for, forget about education. So oh. <laughs> never forget about your students and never confuse uh, popularity and business with education. I think it's not gonna happen, but it could be. You know, we don't know what scale this institution could reach. Wow. <laughs> and, and I would suggest that you become the ambassador <laughs> who comes back every three or five years and check. checks. Checks on that. And does a check on that. <laughs> and that's basically it. Thank you very Good. much, Carlos. I think there's full agreement. And uh, if I might say something, I think for over a hundred years now, we've tried not to keep look, a, a vision of what's important. And it's always been about the student being at the, at the heart. Growth is important, but you have to grow the roots. You have to grow on your principles. You have to grow on what really uh, matters and is important. And, and we hope we never lose sight of that. And, uh, and if we do, I hope someone as intelligent as, as you and a group of students comes and reminds us of what's important. Thank you, Carlos. So, Monica? So, well, it's, it's hard. It's a hard question, but like, um, you know. We have to be bold, haven't we? I mean, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. this is, yeah. just, just to talk about the positives wouldn't be a. <laughs> so, like, um, oh God, <coughs> like, <laughs> we have like, um, you know, junior advisory board, the job, mm -hmm. and they're always asking us this question, like, what we would do to make this institution better? Um, what we would do to make it bigger and, well, better. better. <laughs> and, well, we are always adding new ideas, saying new things, propose things, and, like, you know, that's, that's what it made this institution good and how it, how it is. Mm -hmm. Like, they're always asking us 
how to do it better, how you can do it better, how adult teachers' uh, coordination, co coordination can do it better. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes this institution good, uh, how, and that's how it's going to continue growing. Mm -hmm. So I think you, th the teachers and you and everybody needs to still doing that, asking us keep things, asking. asking. Mm -hmm. We keep asking, hopefully we keep asking the right question. So important. It's more about questioning than answering now, is it? <laughs> so I'll, I'll be a little controversial here because um, <coughs> when we did that work back in the 90s about people's best learning experience, everybody mentioned a teacher or at least a coach or a parent, somebody that was there for part of that learning journey. But they also mentioned that those people were passionate about what they did to the point of eccentricity. And one of the great things about the stability of this community is we've got some crazy people that are just lovely to work with. I look around, I see people's eyes burning brightly. They're mad about maths. They're <laughs> passionate about poetry. We've really got to be careful going forward to keep that eccentricity and that passion in our teachers and in our lecturers so that they can focus it on the students coming through. So I, you know, my kind of, my key thing going forward is to still be a little crazy mm -hmm. about learning because it really matters. It really does. Mm. Sure it does. Thank you, Stephen. So we might continue there and then we finish with Mark. Uh, well, I think it's important to, to uh, consider the teachers mm -hmm. because they are a really important part of this, of this, of this process. Uh, I think they have to be more um, enthusiastic and passionate about the, mm -hmm. the teaching process. Mm -hmm. Because if you show your students that you like what you're teaching, they, um, uh, they are going to understand it better and also they are going to love it, mm -hmm. li like the teacher. So. Of course. Yeah, and by the way, I mean, the, cog the cognitive science says if your teacher has that passion and those little moments when their eyes, but that's why that's when you remember. That's when you cement those medium and long term memories. So mm -hmm. it's not just nice to have teachers that are passionate and crazy; mm -hmm. really efficient too. You know, you know we keep <laughs> saying that the, our, yeah. one of our motives is the passion for learning is a passion for life. So Absolutely. we try to. Absolutely. We're a very lively community. I hope so. We just okay. Two really more minutes and okay. wrap up. Um, <coughs> I've got to say that I've loved what I've learned in these four years of education, this university. Um, I had a really, really um, great support from all my teachers. I had them any time I need them. Mm -hmm. I'm a really curious um, student. I'm all the time asking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm really picky. I'm really um, I'm a, a, bit, a bit perfectionist. So I really need to know everything. At, every point at like millimeter. Mm -hmm. But um, there's one thing I've been like willing to see, like a little bit of, um, this university has become like a big family. Like everything you need, it's in here. You have everything. Mm -hmm. You have lots of means. You have, um, uh, you, you can ask for anything and they, they, they'll give it to you straight away. Um, you can suggest, they listen to you, they hear you. Um, but I'm missing a little bit of, of life outside mm -hmm. uh, the institution itself. Um, English, I'm missing English. Mm -hmm. I'm missing um, doing stuff apart from inside the, the classes, the rooms, and outside, more and more. Um, more work outside, a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. investigation, a little bit as a psychologist, I mean, as a mm -hmm. future psychologist, yeah. mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, researching outside, outdoors, I mean. Mm -hmm. And and I love to see a little bit of that, apart from what we have, which is awesome. Great. Really. So, of course, making connections with the, to the real world. That not, not to say this is not real, we, we hate that concept of school or university life not being real, but of course, connecting with the context, you're very, very right, and we'll keep track and of and that. And of course, so. and glo learning is going global, uh -huh. so you, you're exactly right to, to reach out for those further, and those social experiences too really matter. It's yeah. connected. 
Absolutely. So, Mark. I guess I would focus most on not <coughs> necessarily the inputs or even the process. It's a nice process we went through here for eight, four years or eight <laughs> years or so. I would say, who comes out of this institution? Mm -hmm. What do we get? Do we get good, effective, world-improving people? Do we look back and say, wow, that you, you're phenomenal. You must be a sec person, <laughs> right? You must be this, and we have a few schools in the world that more or less have that kind of a reputation. Mm -hmm. And part of that is picking who goes into those schools because the selection process has a big thing to deal to do it. But more and more we're learning that it's not just the selection process, mm -hmm. it's the goals that we give to people. If mm -hmm. we say your goal is to become a great academic success, mm -hmm. we'll get kids who are a great academic success. If we say your goal is to become a good person who's effective and improves the world, and we demonstrate that in everything that we do in our coursework, we'll get people who go out and do that. If we tell kids you, we want you to figure out what you are the absolute best at and become world class at that, and every SEC graduate should be world class at something, we can get our kids to strive for that. So that's what I would like to see. I'd like mm -hmm. to see us really focus on some very big goals mm -hmm. for our students and then get there. Great. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm sure all of us would want to go on and on and continue listening to this conversation. Many challenges, I think, on the table. I think you've all been great, bold, provocative, and, uh, and inspiring which I think is what we're here for, and I know the whole day is going to be about this. Um, if I may just switch for a second to Spanish. Creo que ha sido una conversación francamente interesante en la que hemos escuchado visiones personales de alumnos, de expertos, eh, que construyen ese sentido de comunidad del que hablaba al principio y que, y que nos va a nutrir. Yo creo que ha habido muchos desafíos, muchas provocaciones también yo creo muy muy interesantes cuáles son nuestros objetivos eh, qué debemos hacer posiblemente como como docentes como educadores y cómo no debemos perder nunca el foco de lo que debe ser nuestra nuestra institución algo absolutamente importante y que de nuevo nos recuerda por qué estamos hoy aquí y por qué estaremos el lunes en las aulas a mí, a mí me ha parecido pues francamente interesante os lo agradezco muchísimo De verdad, os agradezco muchísimo haber querido participar. Thank you so much for challenging us, because that's what we're here for. No estamos aquí para mirar atrás, sino para mirar hacia adelante. Can I just try to say one word in Spanish? Of course, more than I welcome. Uh, I want to say gracias <coughs> a Felipe Segovia mm -hmm. para uh, hacer esa escuela SEC, para hacer una familia uh, espléndida <laughs> con nieves y <laughs> eh, todos y para reunir todo el mundo que están aquí po, para uh, trabajar a, a mejorar nuestro mundo. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pero antes de que bajéis del escenario, vamos a hacer un momento selfie. Todo preparado para inmortalizar este momento. Además, con el público asistente como fondo. Vamos allá. Sí, selfie y el público asistente es el fondo para que salgamos todos. Maybe. Uh, maybe try. Let me try to. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's great. Yeah, perfect. Bueno, y después de una actuación con mucho ritmo, una conversación muy amena y un selfie que espero haber salido bien, nos toca ponernos a trabajar. Abran sus dispositivos móviles y contesten a las cuatro preguntas que van a encontrar en la aplicación de Teams. Verán un apartado que se llama Cuestionario. 
Cuando entren, verán cuatro preguntas que hemos formulado. Las hemos de responder todos como si fuera un tweet. Pero no de estos de los nuevos, de los 280 caracteres. De los antiguos, de los de 140. Las, pre Uy, perdón. Perdón. Sí, sí. Las preguntas son, ¿qué entendemos hoy como una educación pionera? ¿Cuál es, en tu opinión, el mayor desafío que afronta hoy la educación? ¿Qué tres rasgos definirían a la educación en el futuro? ¿Y qué es para ti innovar en educación? Tenemos cuatro minutos como si fuese un examen, ninguno más, uno por pregunta. Así que, por favor, vayan respondiendo. Vamos a hacer como si coge tu móvil. No te lo muevo en Nos quedan tres minutos, así que continuamos. I don't think this is a password. I think it's open. Dos minutos. Entramos en el último minuto, así que vayan terminando. Y sí, sí. tiempo. No. Todos aquellos que no hayan podido terminar, les recordamos que pueden hacer el cuestionario a lo largo de este día. Bueno, ya dejamos en Teams eh, todas nuestras reflexiones, nuestra idea. Y más tarde, como ha dicho mi compañero, podéis seguir eh, contestando si no habéis terminado. Y en la clausura tendremos, estoy seguro, tiempo de hablar de alguna de ellas. Os recordamos que de 11 a 2 y media de la tarde podrán asistir, cuando lo deseen, <coughs> a una feria maker en el polideportivo del SEC, el Castillo. Y que en el pabellón 
podrán visitar también una exposición que recorre los principales hitos de la institución educativa SEC en estos 125 años a la vanguardia de la innovación. Eso sí, les pedimos que lo hagan esta tarde, cuando termine el simposium y antes del día SEC. Pistoletazo de salida, por tanto, a este tercer simposium Felipe Segovia. Y tiempo ahora en el primer bloque de talleres que, como verán en el programa, se celebrarán en el Colegio SEC El Castillo, hacia el que ahora nos dirigiremos. Les recordamos, lo pueden ver todo en su programa, que todos los talleres se celebrarán en el SEC El Castillo. Que allí habrá un coffee break a eso de las doce y media y que allí comeremos aproximadamente a las dos y media de la tarde. Después de los talleres, hacia las cuatro de la tarde, volveremos a este mismo escenario para asistir a la clausura del simposio. Y más tarde, también aquí, a las siete, celebraremos nuestro ya tradicional día sec. Ahora nos dirigiremos entonces al castillo, pero antes de camino les vamos a pedir a todos, por favor, que nos reunamos en el centro del campus, eh, al lado de las banderas y frente al rectorado, para hacernos una foto muy especial. Vamos a formar un 1, un 2 y un 5 para que desde arriba, en un plano picado cenital, nos hagamos una gran foto conmemorativa de nuestro 125 aniversario. Nos vemos allí, en medio del campus. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. <risa> 